The BRAIN initiative, funded by the National Institutes of Health, has so far identified 3,000 different brain cell types. Many scientists have compared this initiative to the Human Genome Project. The comparison is apt, and they are closely linked, says Bing Ren, a molecular geneticist at UC San Diego. This is because the work of those brain cells depends a lot on how their genes are activated. Tiny changes in sequence of our DNA is, um, can make someone more prone to uh, psychiatric disease, such as depression, schizophrenia, uh, or many other, um, uh, or addiction, for example. San Diego researchers working as a team are looking at the way genes within the brain cells are switched on and off. Their work is divided between UCSD and another place right across the street. One of the institutes that's deeply involved in the Human Brain Initiative is the Salk Institute. In fact, last year, Salk received $77 million, the biggest grant in its history, to work on the initiative. Margarita Behrens, a neuroscientist at Salk, says calling the new research a map of the brain is a bit absurd because the initiative has a long way to go. The research done in San Diego shows how genes can affect brain cells for good or for bad. Barron says a key part of this is identifying the kinds of cells that can be compromised by known genetic variants. The genetic variants that give vulnerability to a disease like Alzheimer's seems to be more important in one cell type and not the others. The researchers I spoke to are careful to describe their findings in modest terms. For instance, Barron says they can't yet say genetic effects on cells cause psychiatric diseases. But Wren says the beginnings of the BRAIN initiative represent a big step forward. Our study has pointed out the type of cells, the type of genes, and the type of molecular pathways that are likely involved. It's a candidate list. So the next step was to basically further narrow down on that list and pinpoint one or a few uh, most critical genes. So far, all of the research done for the BRAIN initiative has relied on samples of three brains from three male donors. Given the complexity of the human brain, Barron says they will need a lot more samples in the future. With a human brain, each brain is different. So the variability is really high and to be able to find core uh, things and those ones that are variable, you need a lot of brains to analyze a lot of brain. And so that is why I say we need to go big. Researchers at the Salk Institute have done many extensive studies of the mouse brain, and Barron says we do have a good map of that. But a mouse brain is made up of 80 million neurons. The human brain has 80 billion neurons. Thomas Fudge, KPBS News.